But yeah, so let's let's get into it. We're here to talk about Critical Role Campaign 3 Episode 80 today. And um, just like we always do, we're going to run through our recap of the episode first. And we cut that out, host it separately on YouTube for your viewing convenience. So if you find yourself on that video, but you want to see our full discussion, it'll be linked in the description box below. Um, but without further ado, Critical Role Campaign 3 Episode 80. Now there's actually... The title, there's actually some shenanigans around this. Um, it you was originally called that. Eve of the Red Moon, mm. um, but it is now called, and I... A test of trust. Thank you. A test of trust. <clears throat> so, we pick back up um, for this episode at with Bell's Hells at the start of their third team building exercise. This one, all about trust. So, Nanamori has... Um, emitted the fog and transported them to this fey wild jungle uh, and essentially has told them that there's three ivory branches that are hidden around and they have to collect all three of them without and without breaking them or anything and return them to this central body of water this this well and she says you know there's there's beasts about there's illusions there's traps but additionally there are two doppelgangers that are going to replace two members of you and their sole mission is to sabotage your mission. <clears throat> so Matt hands everybody a card and on those cards are instructions basically. And two of the cards are doppelganger cards and they have like specific missions for the doppelgangers as he, as he explains it. So he hands out the cards, everyone looks at their own card and then essentially the game begins. So what follows is a ton of fun peak D and D the players are giddy and anxious trying to figure out like who to trust. Um, <clears throat> but for the purposes of this recap, I'm going to kind of just breeze through the highlights of this section. Um, so various members of the party go looking for these ivory branches. Um, then we have some sets or excuse me, we have some traps that are set off and, uh, Essentially, just perception checks are being made to look for the branches. Insight checks are being made between the players. Um, again, they're all like, <laughs> they're all kind of like super giddy and like not, not trusting anything anyone says. Um, it's a lot of fun. But <clears throat> Ashton actually manages to find the first ivory branch, and we find out they have three hit points. And if they break, the team loses. So Ashton takes it back to the well tries to throw it in, but is rebuked by like an invisible wall. So they figure out that they need to have all three and put them in together. So um, Imogen does try to use her mind reading to help in this challenge, but it, it's not working because that would be too easy. So a lot of insight checks flying around and um, the players are actually texting Matt when this happens so that like they can say if they're using persuasion or deception and then Matt like announces the result to everybody else. <clears throat> a lot of fun. Um, at one point, a creature does dart out of the bushes and steals the branch from Ashton, uh, but Orem is able to get it back with like an Indiana Jones seedling vine whip. Um, uh, the FCG speaks with animals to look for hints. Uh, Fern speaks with plants to look for hints. Neither of those really pan out. Um, there are a little bit. There's a little bit of combat between some like Feywild vicious shrubbery and like a an owl at one point. Um, Imogen does ultimately find the second branch and shortly after Chetney finds the third one. So distrust still flying around the table, but ultimately all of them kind of reconvene at the well. Um, and everyone, not everyone, but a lot of Bell's Hells are like readying spells on each other. Like Fern's like, I'm going <laughs> to hold, hold person, hold my action, hold person on Chetney. Uh, power word death. Those go out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, but ultimately they're like, or okay, kill. like count of three, let's all do this. So they count down and all three throw their branches in. So no, no one betrayed anybody. And the three branches all swirl around in the water and, and rejoin into one big branch. And then mist once again, like fills the area. The party then wakes back up inside ligament manor, like having just drunk in the tea or whatever. And Maury's like, I hope you enjoyed the nap. So like all of this had happened like in like a dreamscape, if you will. And that's where we go to break on the first half. Great job, man. Um, yeah, coming back from the break, uh, there's a little bit of like party maintenance that needs to happen. Um, they've acquired three new items, uh, the monocle, the scarf, and the branch, like the coalesced branch maybe was the third item. I'm not sure. Yeah, I 
Yeah, I was actually going to ask you that too. Yeah, um, the, the, but I think so because every yeah. item had been like the item. The three twigs kind of came together to make like a long branch, and essentially the party at this point is kind of figuring out who's going to take what, and then also figuring out attunement slots. Like I think FCG um, had was like maxed out on attunement slots, but wanted to take an item, so they were trying to figure out who like should the staff go back to Imogen, um, and they basically kind of figure all of that out. Uh, the other thing they talk about is um, there's kind of just a really nice um, kind of recap on the things that were shared in the honesty session. They expressed to Orm like, hey, I'm sorry you're so lonely and just like know that like we're your family, like we're always here for you. And there's this funny line where Ibjen's like, if you ever want to not feel lonely anymore, you know, just let me know. And then she's like, but not like that, though, <laughs> to which Travis is like, I think we knew it wasn't like that, but thank you. <laughs> Um, and they actually, you know, the party came to their senses and they, to Ashton were kind of like, Hey, I think Imogen actually says like, Hey, I, I kind of understand where you were coming from. And I'm sorry. You didn't feel like you could be honest about your reasoning for wanting to take the shard, um, bringing up the shard. They also talk about, you know, Hey, I think it's actually Ashton who mentions like, Hey, it, it was me, but it could have been anyone. Like we're all a ticking time bomb, uh, to which, um, in that conversation, um, you know, you have Ladna who's really curious about the shard and really intrigued by the shard. Uh, and more importantly, speaking of the shard, they're like, Hey, shouldn't somebody take this now? And going back to Fern, it's kind of like, Hey Fern, it feels like it's you. In fact, grandma, uh, Morgan is even like, I'm very excited to see what could happen with you taking the shard. Um, they decide to go out to the garden before doing this process of taking the shard. Uh, they do take a short rest to regain some hit points. And out in the shard, uh, Fern begins the process just like we saw in, I think it was episode 78, I believe. Um, we see Fern putting on the harness and beginning to consume the shard. It's not as chaotic as when Ashton did it in that Matt describes it as sort of like a gradually ramping up burning sensation. Uh, but it is very much like the rounds that Ashton went through of Fern taking fire damage and essentially trying to survive it. There's a number of things that happen. She casts R of Life on herself, which she is immediately going to lose with a natural one concentration fail on the first sign of damage. Uh, FCG is going to do Bonded Blessing. And actually, I don't know if this was a new ability or I just haven't noticed it before, but also in doing Bonded Blessing has a an ability called Shatter Vigor that allows damage to be taken from one person and given to someone else. And then for health to be transferred to the person who originally took damage so fern is going to take quite a bit of damage and fcg is going to use shatter vigor to make that damage go to ashton uh, and fern actually be healed instead uh, ashton also has given his ring uh to uh fern which allows her to take less fire damage um but essentially over the course of several rounds she goes from taking 10 damage to 20 to 30 and i think the most she ever took was 41 points of damage uh barely surviving by 12 hit points physically what's happening is the fire is like literally blowing out destroying the garden around them uh, her hair is curling back as these flames sort of erupt from her uh, at one point everyone takes 11 points of fire damage and she's also getting visions of something primordial presumably Raushan. at one point she's in darkness and sees a towering figure of fire who looks down on her with almost like she's an ant uh but also there's like a sense of sadness mixed with pride uh and then there's a uh essentially another vision um that actually i can't remember exactly what happened in the final one um but all that to say fern essentially ascends is the best way to describe it she is consumed by fire and effectively gains this sort of fire primordial form to herself um to which the party is like blown away and also there's this cool detail of like it's not just fire but it's fire that like um cascades off into like black smoke and i think there may be in there were even like black flames very dark fern-esque by the way um the party loves it they're like this is awesome um let's have ashton let's see what happens to ashton if they get too close to each other let's have them kiss and ashton's like maybe we can just like shake hands yeah they shake hands 
And Matt describes Ashton's arm like coming alight and sort of like charging up, like turning on, so to speak. Both of them get very big um, magic item cards or like mm. ability cards, uh, which yeah. they frustratingly don't read to the group. Um, so we don't know quite what happens. We know that Fern has some kind of fire form that she can turn on and off and Ashton, that they have some kind of like mold with earth kind of ability, not, not shape earth, but like they can meld themselves into the earth <clears throat> in some way. It seems, yeah. um, so very, and they had like a earth elemental form, right? Yeah. Where they like, he, he, he grew like two feet or something and mm -hmm. it was like, it became very swole. <laughs> It's pretty much what it was. Um, so we've been talking a lot about the party needs big power-ups, and it seems like the two of them did. Uh, and the party decides, hey, I think we're ready to go on this recon mission. And that is where uh, the episode comes to a close. Episode number... Yeah, go ahead. I forgot like a massive part in my recap, yeah. so let me just add it here. No one was a doppelganger. I forgot to mention yeah, that. So right. like that was the whole point of the test is that there weren't any doppelgangers and they just had to learn to trust each other. So Though, I, I think out that very important part. Fern, they were pegged on Fern as being the doppelganger who, you know, Ashley Johnson just could not convince anyone she wasn't. And then I feel like yeah. Sam Regal like intentionally was feigning <laughs> being doppelganger-esque, yeah. um, which was really great. Oh, and an important detail about FCG, um, in doing the Shatter Vigor uh, they're taking stress points and they actually go berserk. So when this whole thing with Fern ends, um, uh, Orem has to basically uh, push FCG away and keep FCG away before FCG is finally able to succeed on a wisdom saving throw uh, and come back to their, their normal self. So mm. um, that is everything that happened in episode 80, a test of trust. If you're watching just the recap, you can click the link below to get our full thoughts and theories and let us know your full thoughts and theories and reactions to the episode.